What's going on my friends? This is Gamer for Life. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing a recap of the state of the game from February 26, 2020. They did get into quite a bit of information ahead of the new update, Warlords of New York. So I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible, but what I will do is leave some timestamps in the description. So you can check out that and see if there's a subject that you just want to jump to. Be my guest. First thing they got into was the priority alerts. There was a maintenance done. Uh, what they did is change the level 30 character boost to only grant materials, caches, and credits once per account. Uh, their intention with this was to give new and returning players a small one-time boost. And there was reports of people exploiting this. So if people have gone over the cap, that is going to be removed next week with the update. You can still boost additional characters to level 30. You just won't receive additional material, caches, and credits every time you do this. Starting tomorrow, there's going to be a free weekend. Preloads are now available on PS4 and PC. So if you have friends or family who was on the fence about the game, now they can try it for free this weekend. Also, everyone who logs in from tomorrow all the way through Sunday evening will receive a free mask. They addressed a question in chat about the exact time we can play the new update. Uh, and they said they did not have a specific time as of yet, but should have one by the end of this week and to keep an eye on their Twitter and their forums for an update on that. There has been reports of some strange things happening with the clan in social lists, a lot of inconsistencies with people going on and offline. They think they found the problem, and they will have a fix for that next week with the update. Also, the re refer a friend reward is still not showing up for some players after waiting 24 hours, and they are looking further into that. Now, with the boring stuff out the way that they did get into what their intention for endgame is. So once you get finished with the Keener campaign, you get to the level 40 gear score. Uh, you'll have a bench that's mostly empty, a recalibration bench, with a large checklist of gear for you to go after. So you'll have a lot of older activities, newer activities, uh, the projects, bounties, and there's no longer going to be target until they completely taken that out. So if you want to go do a bounty, then you just go do a bounty. So now basically you're on a, a chase for better and better gear because they may mention that how the roles work on gear now when you're playing normal, it prepares you for hard. Hard will prepare you for challenging and challenging for heroic. But they did want to make mention that you can still have an opportunity to get a god roll piece, even if you're still playing on normal. Just obviously not as high of a chance to get a god roll piece if you're playing the harder difficulties. So next they got into the seasons. They brought up this map. Uh, a season is going to be 12 weeks. And on this map, obviously they blurred out some stuff because they didn't want to give anything away. But every three weeks, you're going to have a new target that unlocks in a seasonal manhunt. A week after that, you're going to have a league that starts. And a week after that, a global event. And each season will have an apparel event. The first seasons will be at the end of March called Urban Jungle. So every season is going to have four leagues, three global events, and one apparel event. Then they brought up this image, which, again, they have a lot of stuff blurred just so they don't give anything away. But once a manhunt season does become active, this will display all the information that you're going to need on your targets, uh, the different missions, activities, uh, all these different things that you're going to have to do to get to these targets en route to the main target, which once you do get to the main target, they will be using a new skill variant. And by defeating that target, you will gain access to that new skill. 
Next, they show the seasonal tracks. You'll have your standard track and your premium track. Season one premium track will be free because they want everyone to experience how that works. But starting with season two, the premium track will cost $10 each season going forward to continue using that premium track. Now on the standard track, they did say the first 35 levels are just back-to-back -back new items from new gear sets, new brands, uh, all these different things. And as you go through that track, getting to the end, you'll be getting some named weapons, leading up to a new exotic that is specific to that season. Now, what the premium track gives you is more rewards, more items, more gear. There will be new outfits that you'll have. You'll have skins for your named weapons that will completely change the look of that named weapon. Also, you'll get, will get gear dies that cover the entire gear pieces. And they wanted to make sure that we knew that the premium track will not give us something that will uh, give us an advantage over someone who does not have the premium track. So mainly all the extras and unique things that we get from the premium track are all cosmetic. Now, as you progress through the season, they made a pretty big announcement, and that is that we'll be getting two full gear sets, and one is a fan favorite from Division One. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Striker is coming to Division Two, so that's pretty awesome. And you'll also be receiving a new gear set called System Corruption as well. So let's take a look at these talents. Now, on Striker, for the two-piece, you'll have plus 15% weapon handling. Three-piece will be plus 15% rate of fire. And the four-piece is Striker's Gamble. Weapon hits amplify total weapon damage by 0.5%, stacking up to 50 times. One stack is lost each second. Three stacks are lost every time you miss. Now, something that's, that's new coming to the Division 2 gear sets is the chest piece and backpack will have their own unique talents. And on this, the chest piece talent, press the advantage, increase max stacks, max stacks for striker gamble from 50 to 100. Backpack talent risk management decreases stacks lost on missed shots from striker's gamble from 3 to 2. Now on the system corruption, you have the two-piece that is plus 15% armor percentage on kill, three-piece plus 40% disrupt resistance and 40% pulse resistance. Then you have for your four-piece hack step protocol, replaces the armor kits with an instant infinite use ability on a 20 second cooldown that grants 50% bonus armor and hides your nameplate for five seconds. Your chest piece talent, compiler optimization, decreases hack step protocol cooldown from 20 seconds to 15 seconds. And the backpack talent, multi-threaded execution, increases hack step protocol bonus armor from 50% to 100%. Next, they got into the leagues, which will be a two-week event. The first league is called the West Side League, which is based around the Outcast. And what these are skill challenges. You'll have four time trials to basically challenge yourself to finish these missions as fast as you possibly can. You have three on challenging, and then you'll have one on heroic. Um, you'll have one to ten stages that you can complete. And if you get enough stages completed, you'll get rewards. And also, they'll have a leaderboard so you can see how you stack up against other players. Getting into the global events, they did show some gameplay of the first global event we'll be getting called Polarity. Players and enemies will have a visible positive or negative charge. Attacking an enemy with the same polarity as yourself will do increased damage. And I believe if you continue to attack an enemy with the same polarity as yourself, that you will get stacks up to five and each stack will give you even more damage. But if you attack an enemy with the opposite polarity, you will first lose your stacks, 
Then if you do it a second time in a row, then you will receive a shock. Now, if you're getting rushed by an NPC that is a different polarity, the way you can change your polarity is by switching weapons, reloading, or meleeing an NPC. So this was quite a bit to take in, and as someone who's been playing almost nonstop since the game came out, I'm super excited for this new expansion, Warlords of New York, and the new gear system that we're going to have. Obviously, can't wait to use Striker. I mean, there's going to be so much content that we're going to have. It's just going to be amazing. So if you watch all the way through, you are the real MVP. If you skipped around, well, I don't blame you. That's all I've got for today, my friends. As always, take it easy.